Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Friday. It's Daryl here. It is bright and freaking early, man. You know it. It's 3.30 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. Okay, I came across about three or four different stories, and they have to do with race. And uh, I, I want to try to tie them all together. Um, as usual, I want to give my opinion, and uh, I try, I'm going to try to use empathy. You know, put myself in these people's position. Has anything like this ever happened in my life? How can I relate to this? That kind of thing. The first story I came across, I, I think it's in Tennessee. I saw in Florida, uh, Governor Ron DeSantis outlawing uh, critical race theory in colleges and then moving up the whole... Uh, talk uh, any kind of talk about the lgbtq community any kind of talk like that moving it to all 12 grades and then i saw i think in tennessee i think it's in tennessee they're looking to pass the same kind of thing where you university universities and colleges can't it's going to be illegal and there's going to be a reporting system to talk about anything to anything any kind of race being taught like crt being taught and I started thinking about that, that how it, it can never be a good thing when you take something off the table, any kind of knowledge, any kind of discussion, any kind of discussion, especially something about race these days. The next story I came across. Now, these two stories are from Ohio, and it kind of proves my point. Uh, the link will be right down below so you can see this. And the first one is just, uh, it's appalling. It, it's a bunch of kids saying the N-word and, and laughing. Uh, the articles from the Atlanta, the Atlanta Star, I think it's called, the Atlanta Black Star. I think that's the name of the, the media site, and uh, it's 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 uh, the title of the the article is "Snobby Rich White Kids from Ohio Saying the N Word," and they they just think it's hilarious. This the link will be down below, so you can see this. Um, most, I think they're all girls. And so in some cases, the mother is actually in the video. And they're just, it, it's appalling. It's just appalling. I don't know what else to say about it. Uh, the next story I came across was Lauren Bobart. <laughs> okay. And uh, a nonsensical tweet, which is, is that's to be expected. But I, I tried to put some more thought into this. Lauren Bobart, the link will be down below so you can see her tweet yourself. And she talks about the next story I'm going to talk about. This woman in Blue Ash, Ohio, in a Target. Now, you probably heard this. This happened back in October 2022, where a black woman, uh, Karen Ivory, 37 years old, went to cash her to pay her stuff at the cash register. I think the stuff came to a little over $1,000. And she started demanding reparations. Uh, she said, this is her Rosa Parks moment. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this. You know, I, I, I can understand her frustration here. And she, this is where she takes it too far. I think and her, her anger was misguided. It was, it was pointed at the wrong people. She, she ta chases the cashier to the front of the store. And she's being physical. To me, it starts to look like a strong arm robbery. Honestly. You know, that's my opinion. That's probably not something you, you, you figured I was going to say. But that's what it starts to look like. I, I think this woman, I could understand her frustration, especially after you know the stuff you see with these these like these four girls in uh, in Ohio, also in Ohio, just and, and you you see these room like these these four girls or four videos in Ohio, and you could tell in the background these are big extravagant homes. I mean, now you could see it's like a seventy inch TV on the wall, and, and you know. And you could, you could tell they got a lot of money. And I started thinking about that, you know, if I was if I was black. And I, I saw that video, you know. And I, I could understand that frustration, with the, especially with the price of things going up these days. But even back in October when Karen Ivory was in this store. And, you know, not being able to afford things. There's a couple of things I wonder. Like, you know, $1,000 worth of merchandise. Her, her her point would have been better made if it was necessity. You know, I, I don't know if you could if she was buying a thousand dollars worth of necessities, but her point would have been better made if, if she did it through the right channels. If she did it without violence, without it, what looks like a strong arm robbery to me. Then she chases Karen Ivory. She then chases uh, the manager into the back room. Now this is where it gets ugly. I don't. I, this I can't. I can't condone either. The manager just hauls off and drops her. He says he feared for his safety. Now, 
And I just start thinking about this whole thing. I mean, I could understand her frustration. You know, she, she says this is her Rosa Parks moment and she wants reparations. I think her, her point would have been better made if she didn't use, if she didn't, wasn't being physically threatening to these people. Also, I think she took it out on the wrong people. The people she's yelling at, the cashiers, and probably even the store manager are also people that are suffering through, I mean, they're not suffering through the same thing because most of them are white, but I I think she it would have been better if she took her, her case to management and $1,000 worth of merchandise. Now, I don't know what the merchandise was, but I think her point would have been better made if it was necessities, food, clothes, stuff like that. And her point being, I can't pay for this stuff, and I, I want my reparations, and I, it's an unequal system here. And, and, and she might actually be able to make a point on that. Okay, so Lauren Bobart. Now, this just that happened back in October. Lauren Bobart just tweets about it now. It's still a big conversation on Twitter. And Lauren Bobart says, you know, she, she kind of rehashes the story. The link will be down below so you can see yourself. She rehashes it. She says how Karen Ivory wanted $1,000 in reparations. This is her Rosa Park, Parks moment. And then uh, Lauren Bobart's take on this was, hey, look, lady, even Rosa Parks pay for her bus ticket. You know, and let's see, I, you know, I, I gave that some thought. And I couldn't make any sense of it at all. Uh, the, you know, I understand, I, I understand the point even though I don't agree that she, the way she went about it, the, this black woman, Karen Ivory, in the, the, uh, in the Target, but Ro Lauren Bobart comparing buying a bus ticket, this had nothing to do with money, the Rosa Parks incident. It was an unfair civil rights matter, you know, having to sit at the back of the bus, giving up her seat to a white person. This had nothing, you know, the whole thing about having, you know, look, lady, that, you know, even Rosa Parks bought her bus ticket. It, it's nonsense. It makes no freaking sense. So let's go back to, like, Ron DeSantis outlawing or making it illegal to teach, you know, and rat, and making it, make, and promoting other people to rat on professors if they, if they say the word CRT in colleges and universities. When you see stuff like this, like Lauren Bovart's complete misunderstanding of the Rosa Parks situation, you know, she bought a bus ticket, so, you know, it, it makes no sense. Maybe we should talk about this. You know, may, it, it, could, any, could anything bad come out of discussing this stuff in colleges, young people, especially when you see these three, these three four young high school girls uh, laughing and uh, looks like being prompted to, to use the n-word okay now i started trying to compare my try trying to put myself in karen ivory's situation you know i'm part native american and that's not i'm not black i'm not saying i'm you know i i i can't put myself in a position but i i, I thought back you know did i ever feel like this anything similar in my life and i thought back to the time when i was 12 or i was about 13 years old and I live in a, a rich white community here in Connecticut. Back then I did. And uh, I had a friend who was very wealthy, lived in an exclusive part of town. We were best friends. It was, you know, we just became friends. And, you know, I was nowhere near as wealthy as he was. I, I had lost my father. I remember this one embarrassing time when his family took me to a pizza restaurant. And they made me change my clothes. They gave me cl uh, they gave me spare clothes they had because they were embarrassed to take me because I was wearing a sweatshirt that had like a, a sticker on it or something, and they made me change my clothes before they would take me out with them to the pizza restaurant. I still remember that. Anyway, I remember being in their house here. In, it was in Watertown, Connecticut, and he used to brag. He used to be very proud of the fact that his family was there since the Mayflower and all this other stuff. You know, my family's owned this house, and it was a huge old house built in the 16 1700s so there's a lot of houses here in connecticut that are three over 300 years old and he used to, you know when i first be, we became friends he showed me around this house and i'm sure he knew i was part native american and he kept he was very proud of this one particular area of this house this huge rambling house where his father had a den and there, there was a dining room. There, you know, there was like four different living rooms, a, a fancy living room, a TV room, a den. 
seriously, about five, six bedrooms, eight bathrooms. And it was a, it was a huge house, old house. And he was particularly proud of this one thing that it, it, he called it was like an escape tunnel behind a bookcase. It was a very narrow, the bookcase slid aside and there was a very na uh, narrow stone tunnel and stairs that went down. And I never, he, we never went down in there. His father forbade it. But he told me it was an escape tunnel for back when his family first took over this land from the Indians. And they would come, you know, when this is where they would hide when the, in, the Indians came, you know, to, to scalp them. Yeah, I think he actually used those words. And uh, they would go down and hide in this tunnel. And he was, you know, he was very proud of this, you know, this, this, this tunnel that they hid from the Indians from. You know, and I stood there listening to this, and I'm like, this guy knows I'm part Native American, and he's making out these Native Americans to be, you know, like subhuman monsters, where his his kin used to hide in this tunnel, and he was so proud of the fact, you know, that he, you know, that they took over this land, you know, and I used to just stand there. Now, what if I, I what if I beat up my friend? And said, you know what? Now I'm going to live in this house. I want reparations. You know, I tell you what, you know, this is my house now. I'm, I'm, I'm taking over your bedroom. You know, that wouldn't be right either. You know, even though I was upset, I'm trying to use empathy here. I can understand what Karen Ivey was saying. I can understand her frustration with not being able to afford things and seeing other people buying and throwing away tons of nonsense material, not even thinking twice about money. And I can understand that frustration. But the way she went about it, I just can't agree with it. It looks like a strong arm robbery to me. And Lauren Bobart is just clueless. And CRT possibly, couldn't possibly be uh, talking about race in any grade, in grade school or high school or college. Couldn't possibly be a bad thing. Discussing it, sitting down, and discussing it with everybody how it all how we got here where to go from here It'd probably actually be the smart thing to do you guys have a good friday